it actually worked okay cool let's play it now so we're going to go into straight to um brendan schaub's explanation as to why he left showtime um or why he got fired we don't really know and obviously i'm going to do what i usually do i'm going to try and let it play for a minute and then i'm going to pause and interject and give my opinion so i'm not going to keep pausing it every 30 seconds i'll probably try and pause it every minute to about a minute and a half so please bear with me if i don't do that and obviously excused i'll put the link in the description when i upload the video for the full video if you just want to watch it by yourself but you know this is a stream so i'm gonna interject a few times here and there hopefully you don't get too annoyed with me and if you do let me know in the comments and i'll try and stop but yeah this is brendan explaining why he got booted or left showtime Or Showtime goes, but it is official. I've decided to leave Showtime, and uh, it starts. It's official January first, and this isn't like some crazy breaking news for the the guys listening back on the East Coast right now for Showtime or for Espinosa or Brian Daly. I talked to Brian Daly this morning. Uh, this was a decision I made months ago. You know, I I think a lot of time when people leave, you know, certain job and stuff like that there's a sense of sadness and that is not the case here this is a case of you know i've been with showtime for five years and what we've done we've built some some cool stuff man and it's nothing but great memories and this all started this is how crazy life is man this all started when conor mcgregor uh decided to fight floyd mayweather and they needed a, a mma guy to argue that Flo that Conor McGregor had a chance against Floyd and a mutual friend of uh, ours of Brian Daly and mine goes oh you know who would be great as that Brendan Schaub and so I had no relationship with Showtime before that man and we started talking and the next thing you know it's between me I think five other guys and your boy got the gig and I ran with it man and then when that got done I had this weird chemistry with the staff with Brian Daly who's kind of the head of digital Okay, I'm going to pause it at 126. First thing to notice, have you guys noticed, the, those of you who are around when I did the stream about Brendan and Ariel's back and forth, have you guys noticed that he's he has the same sort of like frog stuck in his throat, um, dryness, tenseness, looks like he's on the, sounds like he's on the brink of crying they did when he did the back and forth with ariel remember the last apology he did with ariel when, the, when he kind of was like oh you know everyone lay off um you know he kind of did that weird fake apology not apology explanation why he's being a douche don't, don't you think so he's acting the same exact way which leads me to believe what he's saying isn't necessarily true because the reason why he was so tense and nervous and weird when it came to ariel was because deep down he obviously didn't want to say that apology but it was going too far and ariel was obviously clearly winning and sweeping the floor with his entire team he didn't want to continue going back in the back and forth because it wasn't good for business so he decided just to kind of wave the white flag just so he could continue telling his jokes and do his show not because he felt sorry or because he was wrong or because he felt that he did anything wrong so he's doing exactly the same thing but to go back to what he said I do think he has a bit of a point. I know some of you won't agree, but I do honestly think that might have been the best version of Brendan Shaw when it comes to fight analysis, when it comes to insight from an ex-pro MMA, UFC heavyweight, when it comes to just somebody that genuinely loved the sport. Because I would argue now, again, I would argue similar to flipping DSP's lexicon or similar to DSP's flipping use of language. But um, I would say that quite possibly brendan now doesn't enjoy watching the mma doesn't enjoy watching mma doesn't enjoy watching ufc he doesn't really love the sport the way he did before again understandably so because he got kind of fucked over with the ufc he obviously had a bit of a bad falling out with dana white which is never good he's even though he's a piece of shit you don't want to fall out with your boss because it's going to make you doing your job harder to do he obviously didn't have the greatest time when it comes to matchmaking he obviously had some brutal knockouts so he's got a bit of ptsd there but he clearly lets that seep into his analysis because below the belt is terrible when it comes to analyzing fights. I, I, like legitimately, I'm a casual fan, right? I catch the odd card here and there. I might not watch the whole thing. I might just watch the prelims. I might just watch the main card, whatever. I'm a casual fan. But I can genuinely say if I committed to like a week of analysis and watching pre prior fights and just making notes based on just what I see in my eyes, not with being a martial arts expert, I could do a better show than him. I could actually present a better kind of rounded show in terms of MMA he just doesn't seem like he's passionate about it so i generally do think that time when he was 
kind of um, cucking or kind of licking Conor McGregor's balls before the Mayweather fight, that was actually the best version of Brendan when it comes to analysis. Like he was super balls deep. He was giving some legit reasons as to why he thought Conor could win. Of course, Conor didn't end up winning and most people were looking at him like he was crazy, but all his rationale, all his reasonings for why he thought Conor could win, it came from a real place. It came from a, a genuine place where he was actually, no, thinking about it. No, think about it this way. How he stands, how he throws punches, unorthodox, all this stuff. It was actually proper analysis like he actually committed to watching some prior fights watching some prior fights of Mayweather of McGregor and then kind of fighting his case as to why he thought Conor could win the only thing I'd say that's a slight concern with this statement what he's making it seem is is that it sounds like he didn't actually believe Conor could win and he just played that role so he could get a job at Showtime it kind of sounds like he did it pay for play a little bit I don't know if maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it kind of sounds pay for playish. Maybe I'm, I'm again reading too much into it or that regard, but it sounds a little bit pay for playish. But maybe I'm being wrong. Let's quickly see what the the thing says here in the chat. The the, the bullet's good. Robert Perez says, "Oh, big up Robert Perez. Not seen you in a while, brother. Hope you're good." He said he built the worst comedy special of all time and some shitty fight shows. Lol. Yeah, that's a good call. It's like he's having a direct plot of something. Yep, for sure. Eric C says, "Fuck United, Manchester's blue." <laughs> Eric C man leave me alone why are you always saying Man City is blue all the time on all my streams bruv what is wrong with you let me suffer in silence bruv honestly give me a time Glenn S says um, come on let me tell everybody that I chose to leave Showtime lol Robert Pierce says Brendan has a point just see his innocent damn <laughs> you guys are horrible um, the X the XCJC56 says you can tell he got fired dude sounds like he's been crying all day it's kind of sad yeah exactly that's what I'm, I'm 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 saying too like as funny as it is for us the tracks is to be dancing on his grave to some extent which I'm not I'm just kind of commentating on it because he's a public figure right I'm not dancing on his grave I'm taking no pleasure in this whatsoever it's still a little bit sad though do you know what I mean considering that he's basically his whole identity is about being the MMA guy being the podcast guy being the sneaker guy big brown drinking coffee donuts you know what i mean he's got these little things that he kind of latches onto as a form of a personality which is a bit sad but you know it is what it is we have to kind of do make do what we're given and now he's come he's kind of having to reinvent himself now in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of all his friends that are in comedy moving away from la and he's basically doing it on his own but this is also a good thing for him because it's going to prove if he's really about it or not. Can he sink or swim? Because he's always had someone to hold his hand. He's always had a cosign. He's always had a quote unquote big brother figure. But now he's legitimately doing his own. Like Brendan, you know, Brian Callen's no use to him anymore because he just got, he just beat a flipping rape case or just about beat a rape case. I mean, he's not going to help him in any way, shape or form. And he's not in a position to do so. And he probably can't do it anyway, even if he wanted to. Joe Rogan's you know moved to Texas and that's it really everyone else kind of like you know is much of a muchness so he's kind of having to do it on his own completely and if he can succeed now it would definitely prove that he's a proper businessman beast that he thinks he is but this is the real test all the stuff that happened before was just kind of handed to him again it, you know when you when you're one of the most guested shows on the GRE back in the day that, you know it's easy to win if you're just consistent if you just if you kind of keep appearing on JRE show and you keep recording your show every three times three times a week you're probably going to be successful the only people that don't be successful on JRE are the ones that go there unprepared you don't really have a podcast you don't really have a website you don't have anything that people can kind of bounce to once they see you on that show and then you lose the momentum but if you have something to sell you have something to showcase blah blah blah, blah you can still usually leverage it into other things and obviously he did that pretty well but let's continue again another minute and a half and we'll pause it once more over there and i'll never forget this it's after the fight after uh connor lost to floyd and we're at, we're at a sushi spot in the mgm and we're all set they're all celebrating and brian daly goes so what's next man what's next and i thought well i figured you'd ask that and i had a plan of what's next and that's when i pitched him on below the belt uh tv show and that's when um that kind of took off man that's when you know, we did the, the Below the Belt TV show, which was in downtown. I had my own, you know, TV show, man, which was insane. You know, you're going sound stages and all this, the sets and all this crazy shit, man. And that, that was a wild ride. And what, what's crazy about all the stuff we've done, the TV show, and then what came from the TV show and the Food Truck Diaries and all this stuff is, you know, you realize what, what you want to do. You know, and for me, learning at that pace and having my own network now, realizing what I want to do, what works for me, what doesn't work for me, 
And it was all, you know, Brian Daly, hats off to him. Okay, so let's pause it quickly there. He's talking about this TV show as if, like, it was a TV show. It was more of a web show, right? And if, we can, if we're honest, too, those early shows were brutal, right? Because, again, it's not hard. It's not easy to do. I've done it only a couple of times in my life presenting in front of a camera, reading a teleprompter. It's fucking difficult. And even I have a problem reading out loud, right? And I'm not dyslexic or anything or, you know, I don't have CTE. And I find it really difficult to read out loud and to also not look like you're reading out loud and to also not be awkward with your hands and to also have good posture. Like, it's just difficult to do. So don't, don't you know, I don't begrudge the guy, but it was terrible. Those early sort of pilot shows that he did on Below, for Below the Belt, where he is, if you remember, it's just some deep lore, but he was wearing like a blazer that was clearly too tight for him. He couldn't button up or anything, and the sleeves were too short, and he'd just be talking, trying to trying to be entertaining. they create these little weird comedy segments about MMA and shit. Again, there was a good idea in it, in terms of it being like an interactive kind of, you know, loose mma show because a few that's the thing i understood what he was going for because if you think about it nowadays when it comes to mma analysis when it comes to coverage or fight card reviews or fight card previews most of the people that do it are quite serious in it they're quite analytical they're quite geeky um they're really knowledgeable about the sport about martial arts in general it's not really laid back and relaxed so i understand why he was trying to make it more like a lifestyle show right by having it a bit more relaxed by having it be a bit more fun maybe bring up some memes whatever it may be but he just wasn't a guy for it because he doesn't have the comedic chops that's a problem as well again weirdly enough being a comedian he doesn't have the looseness the kind of charisma whatever it may be to make that show work so it just came across really stiff because he was trying to read the teleprompter to not make mistakes obviously because you know it's a big deal of a, of a show he's doing but to say it was a tv show is a bit of a stretch now he might have he might have as a pilot, it might have run a couple of times on TV. I'm not denying that. But I'm sure they probably quickly figured out it wasn't working. And if you remember that whole Blazer series where he was kind of had, he had different cameras and he wasn't sitting down in a chair and it wasn't just a podcast, it quickly changed really quickly. It went from being him in a Blazer to him sitting down in a podcast. I think they quickly realized that it wasn't working out too tough. And he kind of admitted defeat. But again, the issue I have or the issue that most people have with Brendan and someone like him in terms of his personality he can do no wrong. There's no point of like self-deprecation and be like, you know what? That TV show we started, it was a great idea in my head in principle, but looking back on it, oh my God, those videos are so cringe. Don't bring it up again. Remember that small blazer I had on trying to read on the teleprompter. If you think if you think I struggle now with ad reads, you should have seen me reading a teleprompter. That should be a point where you just try and make it funny, but he doesn't. He just skips past it, makes it seem like it was a great TV show, as if like, you know, everything was perfect and stuff. It's like, come on, bruv. We've all got the video. We know what happened. Do you know what I mean? There's no need to lie quick up the chat what people are saying here da, da, da. um robert perez is saying roberto perez is saying it's sad because his lack of talent is catching up with him how many more breaks is he going to get he's probably scared yeah and no i don't i don't know man maybe i'm, I'm a bit like desensitized and a bit like um cold about this sort of shit when it comes to entertainment and when it comes to stuff within the arts if you manage to kind of fake it till you make it to a certain point you should take advantage of that whether it's making money, whether it's giving yourself a new position, whether it's putting your friends in position, take advantage of every opportunity you have because you know nothing is guaranteed. And you also know if you're faked it till you make it, most likely a person that is legit is going to come up behind you and take your spot. You know that's going to be the truth. You know it's going to be the reality. So to sit there and kind of expect those good times to last forever is pretty naive and I would say quite infantile to think that way. Most people that figure to make it know that know that it's going to end soon and they always have an exit strategy, whether it's the amount of money you make, whether it's what job you're going to get, they always have a route out to get out of it. And I think he just assumed the good times will just continue because he didn't really ever in his mind, probably even, even though he speaks to Joe Rogan a lot, I don't think he ever really believed that Joe Rogan was ever going to move to Texas for real. He didn't think his friend and his mentor in Brian Callum would get accused of fucking rape. He didn't imagine Chris D'Elia would also go down for sexual... He didn't imagine all these things. He didn't, we didn't put these scenarios in his head. So obviously when they happened, it caught him off guard. But I don't have any, I don't have any sympathy or sorry for him in that regard. I just think he just didn't prepare for it well enough. And again, now he has to show and prove because he genuinely thinks he's a beast of a businessman. He talks, he talks to himself as if like he's... Um, was it like an up and coming Steve Harvey? I forgot what's that thing he said. Something about Steve Harvey. He made up that story about Mayweather seeing him and saying, "Oh, you're that white boy that works too much or something." Right? He clearly thinks 
he clearly thinks he's better than what he is, right? Which is good. You need to be delusional again. I'm going to say this honestly because I think some people don't really recognize this sort of stuff. If you want to have a career in the arts, a career in entertainment, or career in anything really, anything that's hard to do, anything that's oversubscribed and there's not enough positions in it. To f so anything that's oversubscribed and there's not enough jobs to fill the, the, the demand, you kind of have to be a little bit delusional. So I don't mind his delusion. I don't mind the fact that he thinks he's this big kind of mogul guy. But now is the time to show and prove. Now you've got put into a corner. You've got none of your friends around you. The fear of one thing is kind of waning. It feels like just king of the sting. He's hardly there. He's always making up excuses that he, he doesn't want to be there sometimes. There's four other people on there. It's a bit of a shit show. Um, obviously, the Brian Callum thing happened. Now he has to show and prove. If he legitimately thinks this Thick Boy Studios thing is going to be a big deal, now's your moment to show us that you're that big business guy with the big brains and shit and you can hustle and you can make money. Because in all actuality, it shouldn't be that hard really think about it. It shouldn't be that hard. He should have done this a long time ago. He should have had a few more shows in-house aside from the Bill of the Bill already running concurrently. He should have used that exposure, that leverage he had from Showtime to obviously bring more attention to the stuff he's already doing, but he didn't do that. So now he's kind of playing catch up, but he should have had already had done this already. But now it should be easy to do, to kind of double down on your audience, give them what they want, make some behind the scene content, maybe subscription based and stuff, whatever. Just kind of expand on his little network, a little university has going on and just kind of build on it. It shouldn't be too hard. But again, it's kind of easier said than done, isn't it? People were saying here on the fling, um, what people are saying here on the chat quickly is saying he got his cut. What's, what's that? He got, he, he still got Callan and Theo. Delirious is a mainstay at Calabas' kind of fight companion. Um, he's straight half his audience hates him already he'll be fine yeah he, i'm sure he'll be fine but i'm just i just don't know how successful it'll be in terms of what he wants because clearly he wants everything do you know what i mean and obviously he's got a big family to take care of he's got expensive habits do you know what i mean it's a lot of my, I, i'd assume his monthly expenses are no joke so this is this is a no wonder he sounds so like anxious and nervous and kind of dry mouthed because this is a big step you know what i mean he's not got that cushy check because imagine what he was getting paid from showtime let's not pocket watch but let's 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 kind of imagine what he might have got paid from showtime it was probably a decent amount right he was getting a month or a year as a salary that he was able to use that to bust it down to fund this to fund that pay a couple of salaries right? i mean that money from showtime probably fed a lot of people and kept the lights on in a lot of places so now that's gone he's have to supplement it or make it up with other things and that's a lot that's a lot of t-shirts to sell to make up a showtime salary it says here, um, the intrigue says he negotiated an informal sit down show. They pulled the production budget. Problem is, this gave short sure license to not do any research. Yeah, exactly. True. Very, very true. I don't understand it, man. Like, from what I see of Shaw, he doesn't strike me as somebody that watches a lot of sports. Like, I watch football, obviously, keep up with skateboarding and stuff that I'm obviously interested in. I might see the odd MMA card and stuff, but the football's my main thing it's pretty impossible for me to kind of get some run-of-the-mill fact about football wrong, like a game that's coming on or a cup competition that's happening or somebody that's out injured. Maybe some other stuff I might get wrong, but in terms of the overall nitty-gritty of the sport, I know it like the back of my hand because it's the thing I watch the most. So I don't understand why somebody in his position, who's, again, a former professional athlete in that sport, didn't want to watch tape or do research or whatever it's just he'd sit there and read wikipedia articles and wikipedia fight records and stuff like what brenda is inventor roberto perez says yeah very true um abd record says good times ended after they bailed on chris D'Elia. very true the intrigue says he also sold his wife's g-wagon really is that true the intrigue when did he sell his wife's g-wagon She's always bragging about that car from what I've seen on the Friday Kids subreddit. She always posts herself driving it. Rotted. That's a big deal because he said that that's her dream car, no? He made a big deal about being able to afford it at the time. So, whoa. Sounding harsh. Um, Josh Brooks said he sounded like he was about to cry the entire time. True. He's uh, the, the, the show. The, the, the. Sorry, I did it one by accident here. It says, imagine all the mates, they being alleged sex offenders is going to end badly. True. Le Pantomime says, again, the question is when this all runs dry, who will be going to rag on? <laughs> Very true. If there's any sense. Um, he's also realizes how hard he's ripped and critiqued other people. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, careers now, his house is on fire and he's falling down on him. And for all of us to see anyone notice how. Yeah, true. That's very true. Maybe it's all coming back to buy him in the house. I'm not really sure. Roberto Perez says, again, honestly, he should just buy some investment properties and rent out a bunch of places. Call it a football reality. 
Thick boy tiger reality. Imagine that, mate. Um, but yeah, let's carry on. Another minute and a half. Yeah, man. He just allowed me to just do what I wanted to do, man. I think a lot of time, guys, when they work, you know, because Showtime is owned by CBS and Viacom, stuff like that. I think there tends to be this assumption that they limit you or they suppress you or they clip your wings. That is not the case here, man. They they don't they don't really edit me. That's just not the case here at all. Oh, I have nothing tell, but good worry. things to say about Showtime. We can tell, brother. And as I, t I talked to Brian Day this morning, and told him I was going to make the announcement today. Um, this isn't goodbye. This is I'll see you later, man. I'm going to do my thing. They're doing their thing. They're doing great. You know, they have all the smoke and, you know, uh, morning combat with Luke Thomas. And, you know, they just won an MMA award. Like, they're they crushing Brian it, man. Campbell. Those guys are crushing it. And, uh, you know, I love Luke like a brother, and he knows he can call me anytime he needs anything, man. Anything they can call me, and Daily BC? knows that. And what about um, BC? I just can't say enough nice things about Showtime, and to let a knucklehead like me run amok and do all these crazy things that I've wanted to do, I can't thank you guys enough. And uh, it's just time for me to do. I do so much stuff to do it exactly the way I want to do it. And I have the means to do it now. And, you know, I've put everything, everything I do, you know, from stand up doing the, the road. Yo, that throat and mouth is dry, man. He is nervous. He's worried. He's stressed. But again, the worry and stress, I understand about it. But it does seem like he's lying about this whole leaving thing. And again, I don't understand it. Like, this is, I guess it's just a standard thing in part Hollywood and maybe, yeah, maybe Hollywood in general. Because you would imagine at this point, now that he's kind of stepped away from the shadow of this big corporation, this big network, that he'd want to maybe paint himself as this young, scrappy guy kind of fighting against a system, trying to make his own way and do the things how he wants to do it, right? So that narrative. In order to sell that narrative, you need to kind of lower your guard a bit and be a little bit vulnerable and be like, yeah, this is a big step for me. I'm really worried. I've got a lot on the line here. Um, obviously I didn't want to leave Showtime but the way things worked out and the shows that they've got coming on at the moment it probably seemed the best time for us to mutually decide to walk away again you don't need to say you got fired no, no one needs to embarrass themselves online but you don't need to spin it in a way that makes it look like you decided to leave and go somewhere else because we don't believe that no one believes that you walked away from a check like that because his entire career so far we've seen from Brendan Shaw and Brian Callan especially with a fire and a kid I forgot what the production company was called, the one that was handling their podcast, but they made no effort to go out on their own and try and make the show a success. They made no effort to do that. It was always under the kind of control and the sort of indirection and help with these kind of, I don't know what they, I forgot what it was called, like a pro podcast production company. I think they handled the ads or something, but he, he could easily done it on his own. They could have easily just done what Joe Rogan's doing and just did it on his own. So then he reaped all the rewards and all the money came to him. But instead, they had some stuff handled by somebody else, the studio, well, all this stuff was happening. But he could have done it easily on his own a long, long time ago. This whole idea of a network or this whole idea of a studio, it could have been done ages ago really easily and they could have been raking in the money and, and living super clean and healthy. And again, that whole podcast partnership thing ended up kissing him in the, or kicking him in the ass because when Brian Callen got accused of that rape allegation, he had to kick him off the show because the sponsors didn't want to sponsor it and because he didn't have basically he wasn't in charge the real bosses of the show said no nah, he can't be on it because if he is you're not gonna get sponsor money and again you're not gonna get ad reads and the main thing that gets them to go in those chairs isn't because they like to speak to the fans it's because they get a bunch of money from ads but then again yeah you know i mean that's what happens in the end so i don't really know why he just didn't say he didn't try and spin it as like a I'm the Goliath and they're the David sort of story instead of making it no we're just two Davids or no sorry instead of saying yeah oh, we're two Goliaths and I decided to walk away we don't believe you no one believes you that you decided to oh, and again we believe him more if he didn't do what he did to Ariel and if he didn't do what he did on the fight on the fight companion in general right all that bitterness that came out of him when you was talking about Ariel and saying that oh Ariel's only there because I said no now we know why he said that because at the time when that thing happened with Ariel he was probably already in negotiations with Showtime and it was already indicated to him at that time because I remember as well someone said on the on the subreddit again the subreddit is the best homeless cats big up all of you guys right because I remember someone on the homeless cats subreddit said back in the day I think it might have been early I don't know when it was something like oh they, they clipped something maybe it was flipping what's that guy who clips all the clips on there um mcspitfire or something spitfire right i think he made a clip where 
Brendan was on the show and he was pretty much in a bad mood, quite grumpy throughout the entire thing. And someone was saying, that, oh, I bet you his deal with Showtime is going to end soon. And quite soon after the fact, that's when the whole like fight companion thing happened where he said this thing he said about Ariel and that beef whole spewed. So clearly he knew from a while back, maybe a couple of months ago, or maybe more, that the Showtime deal wasn't going to get renewed for whatever reason, whether they would decide they were going to scale down because they didn't have enough money or because they decided to go in another direction, whatever. They clearly just told him, we're not going to renew your contract. And then from there, he had to kind of, you know, um, scamper and work out this deal with this big, you know, do this whole thick boy studio thing, which again, credit to him. I'm sure he got this, uh, the heads up last minute and he had to kind of, you know, pull his resources and start hustling. So fair enough for doing so. And then again, managing the TFAT K um, podcast and obviously helping Brian to come back on there, getting Chris Alia to get, a, you know, another shot on an opportunity on a fight campaign. He's done well for given how back against the wall he was, but the lying and the spin to make it look like he left and he wasn't fired. It's just unnecessary, really. Who cares, isn't it? Just admit defeat a little bit, put your guard down, allow the ego and just say, yeah, you know, it didn't work out, right? Towards the end, maybe things changed. Maybe I did get a little bit, I did get a little bit sloppy. I wasn't really coming prepared because I was going through stuff. Whatever, just say something. Like, come on, man. Like, allow the, allow the embellishment for embellishment's sake. Road to all the podcasts I do and this network I do, I've taken every kind of savings I've had, I've invested into Thick Boy Studios and I've hired a staff and I have the exact team I need to flourish. And I hired monsters who have the same work ethic as I do. And now, Ch you know, obviously Chin's with me and Chin's been my ride or die since day one and Chin has a bigger role now. And every vision I have, I can pull off now and it's on me. I'll always bank on myself, man. And that's what we're doing. And uh... quickly stop it there. There's a lot of eye talk in it. It's fair enough you mentioned Chin there, but it's not really... You don't really get the sense that he's kind of um, been able to gather the troops in order to kind of get this collective spirit that they're going to go hand arm in arm and try and fight the big corporations or networks. It's more so about I want to prove to everybody or Showtime specifically and ESPN and all these places that maybe gave me the boot or E that I can do it, that I'm the guy. And now he's going to try and prove it. It's less about his, I mean, his, uh, his network and his group and his employees and whatever or the other people he's got on his network are all an afterthought so far. It's just been him, him, him. He spent the first five minutes basically talking about himself, but then he mentioned Chin there and some other people he's hired, but it's a bit weird. I'm just so excited, man. And like I said, this isn't a negative thing. This isn't a bad thing at all. And I love the guys at Showtime and I'll, I'll st be, still be involved in some capacity, but um, as far as Below the Belt and Food Truck Diaries, um, below the belt will change to the shop show and that will be on uh, thick boy only and then food truck diaries will also come over to thick boy so we're still doing food truck also we're still doing Calbass fight companion i'm adding a bunch of other stuff i'm also taking every name all the shows i do i do too many shows but all the shows i do all the shows i'm involved in i'm taking all of it i'm still going to be on the same platforms you know youtube Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. None of that changes. We're actually adding shows to that. Adding shows to Thick Boy, the vlogs, all, all the other things we have coming up. I'm so excited to announce all that. We have so many shows adding to Thick Boy. But one of the things I'm doing is... So, adding loads of shows onto Thick Boy. So far, the what? What have the marquee shows been? They've been the show with Mustafa, right? Mufasa, sorry, as a thing he calls him, as Ariel calls him, where he basically does what? Um, does the same sort of um, more place, more date sort of show, right? Talking about people, if they're natty or not, giving workout tips, analyzing people's abs and shit. I don't mind that. The guy's a little bit of a weapon. You know what I mean, he's a little bit of a knob in that regard online in terms of his essays. He writes back to people and thinking that he's smarter than what he is. But in terms of being on camera, he's, he's a pretty chill dude. He seems quite charismatic. He seems to be able to hold the show down. He seems to be quite funny. Um, in his own way so I'm sure that'd be fine the Chappelle show where he's what going and talking to his friends again the Chappelle show if he focuses on what's it called Chappelle show Chappelle world if he focuses on talking to people that are in bands that he knows because he's really knowledgeable in music and shit that would be cool if he turns into anything else in that like comedy you know what I mean no one's going to turn him but I think if he angles it as a way to kind of promote people that he knows are in bands or maybe showcase newer bands or talk about monumental you know points in his history or not, influential points in his time 
over you know, influential moments of his life basically when he kind of discovered a band or went to a festival or, not, or a significant show that might be a good thing what else is going to be in the network cat show where's it pussy bandit i don't know who's going to tune into that one she seems a bit dense to be honest yeah i know she's got a big following on on flipping only fans and whatnot but how many of those um thick boy fighting the kid fans are going to actually listen to her talk about sex and whatever and again she's not really talking about sex though because she's in a relationship i don't know how that works when it comes to female podcasts where they talk about sex and relationships if you got if you got a boyfriend does anyone really want to hear about you just fucking your boyfriend not really you know what i mean that's why the call her daddy podcast works in the beginning because they were both two single girls in the city finding their way you know what i mean like smashing and dashing whatever they can along the way that's probably more intriguing to listen to as a male or as a female so i'm not too sure about that one who else is going to have a show he's probably going to give chin a show i'm assuming some sort of show i don't know maybe about fishing or about being boring and flipping eating korean barbecue i don't know what else he's going to do there so it's a little bit thin on the ground in terms of shows that can carry a network and give him the money that he can replace and showtime peas with that's a bit of it that's going to be the big struggle in that regard i see um and then you know all the platform stuff yeah makes sense in it he keep on the same platform all that good shit but i don't know man I, he doesn't really have the strongest supporting cast it feels like but the interesting part about it is that it sounds like showtime are going to keep below the belt so they're going to keep it rebrand it maybe and have a new host and it's going to be pretty clear what they really want to do with the show when they give it to a new host because we're going to see somebody go into it balls deep do the research whatever it may be i mean it's gonna it's gonna be a different completely different show i think when it goes to another host um the food truck diaries is a good idea to keep in-house it's a good idea for him to keep that ip because if i'm not if i'm not if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure food truck diaries might be the second highest viewed thing in his little empire of things that he does after t5k might be the most consistently high views and again maybe his botted views and again he pays supposedly according to error he pays guests to get on the food truck diaries so that obviously skews it a little bit and you know he's obviously interviewing some top level guys in terms of food truck diaries he's not really ever talking to kind of up and coming people that don't really no one really knows there's always somebody that's kind of hyped so maybe that kind of skews the numbers but it's going to be tricky man it's not going to be easy for him that's for sure I'm taking everything going over to Supercast, uh, which is a subscription thing where everything I do, you'll be able to get and more ad free. Uh, you don't have to worry about ads, any of that stuff. And there's a bunch of bonus content there, but that all start in January. Nothing changes around a bunch more. Everything will be under Thick Boy. And uh, that's it, man. And I can't thank Brian Daly and the team at Showtime enough for, for taking a chance on a, on a meathead like me, man. And uh, I'm just proud of what they've built. And I'm proud of Luke Thomas. And they won their freaking no MMA Brian award. Mentioned. You guys no are killing Brian it, Campbell. man. And I'm, I'm here. Like I said, this isn't goodbye. This is see you later, man. I'll it see you later. Goodbye. And Brian, I love you. And uh, everybody back at Showtime working, not only here with Malka in the Santa Monica office, but everyone in New York and Espinoza for, I don't know how many times that guy stuck up for me and Nevins, the uh, just always having my back and just everybody at Showtime and, you know, on the East Coast, we didn't see each other enough because I'm a West Coast baby. So um, I appreciate you guys, man. I know a lot of work goes into it. You know, I, I, you guys won't have to hear from me anymore. You know, if the show comes out late or if a graphic is off or uh, if something wasn't done right, that goes on somebody else. And that's the way it should be. So um, I love you guys, man, and all the work you put in. Hopefully you learned something from me because I definitely learned from you guys. And I'm excited to see what you guys do next. And if you ever need anything, you guys have my number. And uh, make sure you like, subscribe to Thick Boy. And uh, I love you guys, man. But this isn't the last show on here. I think December 31st, my, my last official day was Showtime. And again, for the fans out there, this isn't, um, something they weren't aware of, anything like that. This this happened months ago. And I, I think some we of know. you hardcore fans out there figured it out when uh, I launched my own Thick Boy kind of YouTube and the direction I was going with things and stuff like that. But um, it's just... Nah, man. This this is... A, I'm, I'm calling it, man. This is a lie. He definitely got fired, for sure. 
he definitely wanted to stay. They decided to move in the other direction and caught him off guard during the pandemic. He probably panicked. That's why he was stressing about Ariel. And I think somebody mentioned in the chat, that's why he probably started drinking heavily that time too. It all coincided, even though he was supposed to be developing his whiskey. I'm pretty sure he was drinking heavily to cope with that pain. His wife looks like she's got expensive taste. He's got kids in private school that go to, I think his kids go to the same private school as like, I don't know what actor they say went there someone's crazy like he goes he put his kids in a private school that he probably has no business putting them in to be completely honest but again it's la he's come from nothing in that extent you got when you got your kids you probably want to do whatever you can for them and give them the life that you could never have when you were younger i understand it but the way he's talking how tense he is how dry his mouth is the fact that he looks like he's trying to be somewhat mature about it because i think in the past he would have probably fired off the hip a little bit more and been a little bit more flagrant about what happened what went wrong but he clearly has been told by his age agents and stuff because i think he's managed by cea people so they're legit they're probably telling him look don't don't fuck it up you probably got you, you got told to ski dazzle but it happens all the time in hollywood people tell you no all the time but you just opportunity to kind of go back to a drawing board do your own thing prove just because the thing at the end of the day even if we all don't rate him this is a good opportunity for him to prove that he's as a bigger deal as he says he is because if he can make all those shows work under the thick boy studios network kind of idea whatever youtube channel and he can get the numbers to be the same as they were prior with no little drop maybe of an increase um maybe you can get some viral clips going develop a show maybe develop some steps from talent that goes on to do other things that would really look good on him do you know what I mean? he could be able to leverage that into getting more money and getting more deals that's the real kind of test and that's a real opportunity that's kind of a, on the table for him but again does he have the talent? Does he have the ability? Does he have the charisma? Does he have the ability to be introspective all that sort of stuff to make it work? I very much doubt it. But again, stranger things have happened. Just time, man. I, I feel ready and uh, I'm banking on myself and I got a hell of a team behind me, man. I got a hell of a team and that's been the, the key to my success um, with anything. I have some brilliant, brilliant people behind me and um, Brian Daly is one of the most brilliant men I've ever met and He's gonna go on and do big things, man. I'm excited for him. And Lewis uh, with Malka, both close, close friends, man. So thank you guys so much, man, for, for taking a chance on me. And I love you guys. And uh, I'll be around, man. This isn't goodbye. <laughs> nah, come on. Come on, bruvs. No one believes that he left, man. Look at that face. Look at that face. That was someone, that's the face of someone that went to cry. Where is it? It's here. Look at this face. He's going to go on and do big things, man. I'm excited for him. And Lewis uh, with Malka, both close, close friends, man. So thank you guys so much, man, for, for taking a chance on me. And I love you guys. And uh, that's a that's a very sad face of a guy. And again, not to take any joy in him kind of obviously falling flat on his ass, but it is what it is. The game is a game, whatever, in it? Entertainment, he'll be able to have an opportunity. He's still got a chance to kind of springboard off of it. You leverage it. I'm sure later on down the line, you'll probably be able to have a chance to go on JRE and promote his whiskey or promote his network when it fully launches or promote his special. He'll be fine. But again, does he have the ability to learn from all of these mistakes? Do you know what I mean? Does he have the ability to do it and kind of build from it? I don't really know. Let's see, let's see. Anyway, a couple more minutes to go and then we'll move on. I'll be around, man. This isn't goodbye. It's just, I'll see you later. I'm in Calabasas. So that's it, man. So it's official. Um, I'm leaving Showtime end of this year. And everything will be under Thick Boy. And we have some some big, big announcements happening there. But Food Truck, The Shop Show, everything you see will all be on Thick Boy. Still doing Food Truck. This show, you don't have to worry about the audio. The RSS feed stays the same but the video will come over to Thick Boy officially. It's called The Shop Show. We're redoing the set, everything. And um, we had some fun surprises for you guys, man. So it's, it's going to be a big year. 2022. If he does a shop show, fair enough, right? Another MMA show he's going to do, or well, he's going to go MMA and fight cards. It's an easy win for him. But please, man, just do a tiny bit of research, my guy. I can't understand why a former UFC heavyweight a former legit heavyweight that was in flipping what's that thing called what's that show they do um whatever that show does where he, i don't know is it whatever that show is what he did before that reality tv show that he did right like he's a legit ufc guy he was there at the I wouldn't say beginning but at least at the middle 
in this kind of infancy, right? He got all that early rub. He was at the time when they could put flipping sponsors on shorts and shit, right? He had a good time there, a good opportunity to make some money, get some exposure, use it as an opportunity to leverage into other things. Obviously, his relationship with Joe Rogan could blossom during that time. He obviously blossomed with Brian Callen. Why doesn't he just show a little bit more passion, a little bit more excitement about the thing and just do a little bit of research? Again, you used to fight in that flipping sports organization. You used to do that shit before. You should have a whole different perspective in it that's why probably a people it's the same thing people have a problem with with dc at the moment right dc is getting ragged on for his analysis but it's the same reason why because he is clearly an intelligent dude clearly well spoken clearly has super it's clearly super passionate about the sport loads of experience former champion he shouldn't be throwing it in he shouldn't be paying people to do research for him he should be able to sit down for a week and bang out some notes you know look at tape make some, you know, um, impression, like write down some ideas on what he's seen on tape because again, he's been a coach before as well, all this stuff. Like you should be able to have a level of insight that money can't buy, right? A level above whatever everyone else can kind of deduce from what they're watching, but he doesn't, he just phones it in. Same thing with Brett, with Brendan Shaw, but like don't phone it in, man. If you've got another chance to do another show, at least take it seriously. It was gonna be a big year for your boy. So wrap all this up, show time. I love you guys and I'll never forget what you guys did for me. And uh, I'm excited for you guys next year. And Brian Daly, I love you so much, man. And thank you for taking a chance on your boy here, man. All right? Now let's get to the fights. Some great fights, man. You had some great freaking fights. What a way to close out the year for the UFC. Biggest year in company history, I think. It's not closer. There's another fight card happening this weekend. Does he not know there's another fight card happening this weekend? I was just saying in terms of the legit sort of like UFC numbered fight cards. This is another fight card. There's, I know it's a fight night happening, but... Preview wise, they're killing it, man. And I love to see it. I love to see it. You know, we did a cowboy's fight campaign with uh, Rob Derrick. Rob's actually... I think a lot of you guys were surprised. You didn't realize how big of a UFC fan Rob is. I knew that, but I think some of the fans like, oh, he's just the, you know, the skateboarder funny guy from Dickusness. He's a big fan, man. He what? knows his shit. Um, he's he's trying to bet what Brian. Say? I knew that, but I think some of the fans like, oh, he's just the you know the skateboarder, funny guy from Dickusness. Give a UFC fan, Rob is. He can't I knew that, but I think some of the fans like, oh, he's just the you know the skateboarder, funny guy from Dickusness. He's a big fan, man. He knows his shit. Um, he's he's trying to bet Brian a lot of money, and Brian probably should have took that bet. Yeah, it was a fun dynamic, man. You know, that show, you know, you're drinking, and having fun, stuff like that. Anyway, that's that done. Um, yeah, anyone anyone sitting there who genuinely believes that he left Showtime off his own accord, you're smoking on that good Zaza Z, and I want whatever you're smoking. He clearly didn't leave of his own accord. Like, no one leaves, especially somebody like Kim would leave those kind of checks behind. Nothing in his past has shown that he's wanting to or would be willing to do anything on his own. He obviously got put into a corner and then he had to launch all these things back to back, which is why it all got so rushed so quickly. Um, if this was a plan all together, he would have done this a little bit more strategically. He rushed it all because obviously he had no other option. He needs to pay his bills, he needs to keep people on salary. He's obviously got things he wants to do as well in the future, but this has all been an afterthought because clearly they told him that we're not going to renew your contract because of whatever reason. The reasons we don't know why, but for sure he didn't He didn't walk away of his own accord. It's for sure as a thing of like, we don't want to offer you a deal. He said, cool, I'll go somewhere else. And because it's Showtime and they're a big network, they don't really mind if you spin it another way. They don't really care as long as you don't go out there and kind of begrudge them and say some nonsense about them online or in press or no media. They don't really care how you spin it because they don't have to pay you anymore. Do you know what I mean? As long as you just don't say anything negative about them, it's all good. So they probably went to some sort of agreement. He was able to come out and say, yeah, I left of my own accord, but nah, I don't believe it, man. No way, shape or form. The guy seems too nervous, too scared, too too apprehensive to just he just seems a little bit worried which again makes complete sense like i said because i'll just assume brendan shop's monthly bills are no joke we've all seen what his wife sells on flipping um vintage or whatever the shops that she sells her shit on you know she's got expensive taste he's got two kids like new, newly you know kind of under 10 one's in private school one's you know whatever i think a like baby what not right he's got cars he's got i mean he, he does stuff he buys stuff like he likes to find the things in life so it's probably a nerve-wracking time for him but i don't believe that he walked away of his own accord i don't believe that i don't care i do not care 